Recently, I uploaded a video featuring the WWE Raw or WWF Raw video game on PC, and in that video, I said I wanted to look at Raw 2 on the Xbox. I waited for the console to arrive after purchasing on eBay, and here it is. The seller done me a solid and he threw in a few extras, but I'll talk about that in the next Xbox video I upload. I got copies of WWE Raw 2 and WrestleMania 21. I did a little work to ensure I could record this bad boy, including buying a new capture card, and all in all, it was a pretty pain free experience getting this all up and running, made even easier because this Xbox right here was soft modded. I booted the console up and seriously, it's almost like the previous owner knew what games I would play. And I'm not condoning piracy here, the reason for the soft modded Xbox will make a whole lot of sense when we talk about WrestleMania 21 in the near future, but look at the games that the previous owner already had on the hard drive. Def Jam Fight for New York, Marvel vs Capcom 2, Freedom Fighters, I played the hell out of this game, Max Payne's in here, the Fatal Frame games, Shenmue 2, Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, that one I always wanted to play but I never got the chance. This was the best £25 I ever spent. So with that in mind, it took me a little longer than planned to record the footage for Raw 2 because I was having so much fun playing other games, but when it was time to play the game, so to speak, man, the memories came flooding back. I haven't so much as looked at Raw 2 since I owned it all those years ago, it's nearly 20 years ago. And after playing the first Raw game a few weeks back, I was expecting this to be bad. I was totally wrong. Raw 2 may look a little familiar and it may run on the same engine, but really, it makes its predecessor look like a demo. The developers done an incredible job of tidying up their mess and presenting a much more complete game, but we'll talk about all that in today's video. This is WWE Raw 2 on the original Xbox. Boot up the game and the first thing you're greeted with is the Ruthless Aggression Era intro to Monday Night Raw. The full name of this game is listed as WWE Raw 2 Ruthless Aggression but it doesn't say it on the box art or even on the title screen. Check out the main menu too, gotta give them points for capturing the look and feel of the TV show. You've got a whole lot of options here including a season mode, a royal rumble mode, king of the ring, tournaments, things like that. You've also got a theatre mode where you can watch titantron videos but more on that later, you don't have access to any titantrons when you start the game. Unfortunately, there's no character bios this time around but trust me, the trade off is worth it. Have a look at the match types we now have available, this is so much better than Raw 1. Ladder matches, hell in a cell matches, cage matches, all the usual matches you'd expect are here and thank god, Raw 1 lacked variety and Raw 2 fixes that problem right from the get go. Let's jump into a match and check out what's different in terms of gameplay and match presentation. Entrances can be hit or miss here, but overall they're improved over Raw 1. Shawn Michaels entrance, for example, feels very slow, whereas The Rock walks to the ring with purpose. You're gonna find entrances that are spot on and some that just aren't too good. Character models are interesting and the art style is something we wouldn't see again in WWE games. Wrestlers almost look a little glossy, almost like action figures. It's hard to explain, but just look for yourself. During entrances, some characters can kinda look like they're cell shaded, must have been something to do with the lighting because it's more prevalent during entrances, I don't know, but overall I like how the characters look. Against Raw 1, and I'm sorry but that's all we've got to compare against, but against Raw 1 the characters look leagues better. Remember that weird Triple H from the first game? Well, look at Triple H now. The arenas look great again, the fog's back too, it isn't as heavy but it still looks fine, arena stages light up really well and what's more, we have more than one arena this time, imagine that. Start a match and you'll notice things have been simplified, gone are the multiple status bars, these two meters at the bottom of the screen will give you all the information you need. I did like the shared momentum meter from Raw 1 but this still works fine, it's pretty much an adrenaline meter or spirit meter you'd find in other wrestling games, get it up to red and you can perform up to two finishers, if it goes blue you're in trouble. A danger warning will also appear if you've taken too much damage but I found this to be a little inaccurate at times, I've had matches where the CPU would constantly kick out even when in the danger state. That's it really for the heads up display, it's straightforward and extremely easy to understand. 
Now, gameplay-wise, if you absolutely despised Raw 1 with every fibre of your being, then chances are you're not going to like Raw 2. It's still clunky in places and the hit detection is more or less the same, but there are a lot of improvements here. The action button's been spread out a little, meaning you don't do things by accident anymore. There's more chances the chain moves together. There's more variety in the moves that are available, with the developers adding in more situations where you can pull off grapples, like against the ropes. And the overall pace has been quickened up to make matches a little less bland. It isn't perfect, there's still a certain awkwardness to Raw 2 that you have to adapt to, but it plays so much better than Raw 1. You'll notice there's not a referee in the ring, and what's awesome about Raw 2 is the fact that there's a few referees available, including Earl Hebner, Nick Patrick and Mike Kyoda, but fucking hell do they count slow. It's a shame too, because having multiple referees was a nice touch, but it's a problem when the referees fall asleep in the middle of pinfall counts. That notwithstanding, honestly, Raw 2 makes Raw 1 completely obsolete. There's maybe a couple of characters you'd like to play as in the first game who didn't make it to Raw 2, but that'd probably be your only reason for ever going back. Let's take a look at the roster then, I'll go through it again here so you can have a look. There are no unlockable superstars in Raw 2, what you see is what you get in terms of the official WWE roster. It's an incredible set of superstars here, Austin, Rock, Shawn Michaels, Taker, Flair, Hogan, Kevin Nash, Rob Van Dam, The Dudleys, Brock Lesnar, Dave Bautista, John Cena, Randy Orton, Edge, Angle, Benoit, Jericho, it's absolutely stacked. The women's roster is also noteworthy, the Smackdown games would sometimes only include a few female superstars, it's just the way it was back then, but you've got a great selection here including Trish Stratus, Jacqueline, Lita, Molly Holly, Stephanie, Victoria, Jazz, Nydia and more. Gameplay in Raw 2 might not impress some people and that's understandable, but for my money, this is one of the best rosters in any WWE game ever released. What's more, they do play differently. There's quite a lot going on under the hood in Raw 2 in terms of attributes, relationships, alignments and the general personality of each character. This is explored way more in the season mode, but it can also transfer over to exhibitions. What you've got here is a full roster with guys either liking or disliking each other and it goes way deeper than heels versus baby faces, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's take a quick look at a few of the new match types in Raw 2. Hell in a Cell is now available and it took me a little while to open the cell panel up and actually climb up the structure but once you're up there you can put your opponent through the ceiling as expected. In a cage match you gotta mash the buttons to climb up and check it out, I got up there, I thought you had to press the main action button to climb down, but no, fuck. I checked out the button layout for ladder matches before I got stuck in and this is weird, press the black button to climb up press it again to reach for the belt. This part's all well and good, but your superstar jumps forward when they reach for the belt. They just jump as high and far as they can, so you can't just place the ladder underneath the belt. TLC matches are just like ladder matches, except you've got extra weapons. Table matches are pretty straightforward too, nothing to say here really. Hardcore matches are falls count anywhere encounters, whereas you gotta pin your opponent inside the ring in a street fight. And that's it really, 64 wrestlers can enter the Royal Rumble, and even more if you have custom characters, but only 4 guys or girls are in the ring at the same time. It's a bit odd seeing as 6 characters can compete in Armageddon matches, and speaking of the 6 man matches, these are absolutely insane. The way Raw 2 plays, it just doesn't really suit big multi man matches all that well, so it's maybe a good thing that Raw Rumbles are limited to 4 wrestlers in the ring at the same time. Before we dig into season mode, let's take a look at the expanded create a superstar mode. I mentioned in the Raw 1 video that I wasted a lot of time in here even though I'm not big into creating custom wrestlers, but there's something here that kept bringing me back and that's the entrance creation. 2k fans will laugh at this now I'm sure, but back then this level of lighting customization for entrances was unheard of. Raw 1 had options to change the arena lighting, but Raw 2 goes a step further, letting you time your pyro, add ambient lighting to the whole arena, changing the timing of lights flashing 
turning on and off. With enough patience, you could make the arena light up in time with the entrance music and it made walkouts feel way more authentic. Add in the fact that you could rip your audio CDs into the Xbox's hard drive and use custom entrance music and you can see how this would become quite addictive. You can also edit the superstars on disc, meaning you can give HBK his awful Survivor Series 2002 tights if you really want to. I got loads out of this creation suite years back so I can only imagine what others created who were actually good at custom wrestlers and custom entrances. Ripping CDs for theme music makes Raw 2's creation modes an absolute winner. And then we come to season mode and this is where things get unexpectedly impressive. Those who enjoy universe mode in the later 2k games are going to have fun here. This is a unique single player experience that you'll only find on Xbox, where universe mode kinda gets mixed in with the old PS1 Smackdown season modes. So start a season mode and pick a wrestler, up to 4 players can choose a superstar and you can change superstar at any time. You'll then get brought to the first card of the season mode and your wrestler will get booked in a match. It may look random, but a ton of things went on to come up with this card and your opponent wasn't necessarily drawn out of a hat. Let's look at Kurt Angle's profile. Kurt has quite a few enemies and quite a few allies. His biggest ally is Hulk Hogan and his biggest enemy is Chris Benoit, although the hostility meter tells us he isn't overly friendly with anyone on the roster. Matches are booked based on these relationships to a certain extent and you can change who your wrestler's friendly with and who he fights with by completing certain tasks in the main game. Now you may be thinking this is straightforward enough, but how do other rivalries begin that don't include Kurt Angle or anyone else you're controlling? Well, if we go to create a wrestler mode and look at Kurt's profile there, we can see his character alignment. The game also refers to this as his gimmick. Kurt's a type C wrestler, someone who aims for fame and success. If we look at someone else, say Triple H, we can see that Triple H is a perfectionist. Superstars with different alignments will go after other superstars depending on their alignment. So for example, Triple H is type A, he's friendly with type I and type B, but he's hostile towards type E and type F. You can check this quickly with the colouring of the letters. With each wrestler having different alignments, you end up with everyone on the roster feeling differently towards each and every superstar, and this helps the game book matches for season mode. There's more though, each wrestler also has some character and personality traits. Let's look at shit Bret Hart here for example. He's a hero, a type A hero, I'll explain more about that in a moment. But here you can see I've added some wrestlers who Bret won't get along with too well in the game. This helps again in booking matches, setting up sneak attacks, things of that nature. Basically, you're telling season mode how a wrestler should behave and who he should like and who he should dislike, along with setting their alignments too of course. The hero type A thing, that's more to do with cutscenes, so let me explain how these work. In between each and every match on the card, you can choose something for your superstar to do. You can rest, you can call out another wrestler, you can try to manipulate other superstars into feuding with each other, you can interfere in matches, there's quite a few options here and hopefully everything you do will have some sort of consequence if you're successful. Sometimes things don't work out too well and you may fail in your mission and being a devious backstage bastard, but you're effectively building your own storylines, rivalries and partnerships through these cutscenes. Remember the hero type A thing for Brett? That just changes some cutscene animations. So for example, type A hero will pace around the locker room while type B will stretch his arms. So in career mode, you're controlling any wrestler you want really on any show. You're making your superstar do things in between matches to see where it leads. You're also building up superstar popularity or draining their popularity, it's really up to you. And you're also unlocking things along the way. Arenas are gonna unlock once you reach a pay per view and get this, you'll have to steal things from your opponents to get the remaining unlockables. Not even joking, the first two items you'll steal from a superstar will be their ring attires for create a superstar mode and the third item you steal will be their titantron movie for museum mode. There's 64 wrestlers in the game, that means you gotta steal 192 times to unlock everything and keep in mind, sometimes you can fail and steal nothing. It all depends on how much you really want those sweet titantron videos and how long you plan on playing career mode. It's a daunting task being an absolute thieving bastard, but back then I'm sure a few people 100%ed this thing. I certainly didn't though. 
During season mode, Eric Bischoff can book you into special, unexpected matches and you can start working on getting the upper hand over your opponent even before the match takes place. You can get tag team title shots with superstars you're friendly with or if your wrestlers are part of a faction or tag team, you'll likely get paired up with a teammate. Factions can be added and removed via an option on the main menu. Other superstars may try to attack when you rest backstage. Some superstars may want to start a rivalry with you depending on the factors mentioned earlier and even if you make it all the way to WrestleMania, the season mode will continue on, it never ends. Some people may not like the sandbox nature of season mode while others will love it. I think it's great because it's unique and it's different but just like the overall gameplay of Raw 2, it isn't perfect. There's no dialogue to keep you engaged, cutscenes can become a little repetitive and it can get a little tedious going through each and every segment while skipping matches and watching the same stuff over and over again. This won't bother some people and other people are going to find it annoying, it just depends on how patient you are really. Also, the game's booking system can get confused sometimes and that's maybe because there's too many things at play. I won the tag titles with Hollywood Hogan while playing as Kurt Angle and a few weeks later Hogan decided to team up with his buddy The Rock to face Angle and Scotty Steiner. Maybe Hulk just has a stronger relationship with The Rock in the game. Raw 2 does a good job of changing things up though, you will enter rivalries and get matched up with the same opponent quite a bit but different match types will keep things fresh. If this season mode would have been in Raw 1 with its limited match types then it would have been a disaster. What they tried to accomplish here though was impressive, they didn't go for a simplistic and linear season mode, every person who played this game would have had a pretty different experience in season mode depending on the actions they took before matches and that's pretty awesome, seeing how things unfold can be entertaining and I really think the season mode would suit streamers and guys who upload full single player playthroughs on YouTube, it would always be different. Finding information about what happened to Anchor Incorporated is hard to come by. Their official website seems to focus on renewable energy, so I'm not sure what's going on there. With the insane amounts of improvements they made with Raw 2, it makes you wonder how Raw 3 would have turned out if Anchor kept the license. Raw 2 wasn't the company's last console game, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood was released in 2006, but the guys within Anchor who worked on Raw 2 were unfortunately given their marching orders. A report came out on September 9th 2003 saying that the whole Raw 2 development team were laid off shortly after the game was approved by Microsoft, so by the time Raw 2 hit the shelves, the guys who worked on the game didn't have a job. THQ representatives apparently refused to comment on the firings too. All that was left in anger at the end of 2003 was the team that worked on the Pride MMA game. So it's pretty obvious that THQ and possibly some within WWE were not happy with Raw 2 as a game. They didn't even wait to see how it would sell before firing the whole team who made the game. Raw 2 has its issues, no doubt. The gameplay was still criticised and admittedly, a lot of the praise I have for the game comes from the fact that I just endured Raw 1. But it's very clear that Anchor listened to feedback and I think their ideas for season mode and creation modes were on point. Gameplay needed more than tweaking though, let's face it, it needed overhauled completely. And rather than let Anchor try again with Raw 3, the decision was made to create a new series of wrestling games for the Xbox, a series of WrestleMania games. Newcomer Studio Agante, headed by John Tobias of Mortal Kombat fame, would develop WrestleMania 21 for the Xbox and, in short, the game put the developers out of business. That's right, WrestleMania 21 killed an entire development company and I honestly can't wait to start playing it. If the WWE and THQ had a crystal ball, maybe we would have seen Raw 3 on the Xbox but it wasn't meant to be. Do I regret playing Raw 2 and getting the Xbox again to play it on? Absolutely not. A ton of memories were unlocked as I played through this game and even seeing the cutscenes again in season mode made me smile. We all have games like this that didn't do so well on the grand scheme of things but they still hold a ton of value to us simply because of the nostalgia they bring. It's the same with movies, TV shows and music. Raw 2 won't look like much to those who didn't experience it nearly 20 years ago but for those who also played this game to death back in the day, I sincerely hope this video unlocked some memories for you too and I hope you enjoyed taking a trip down memory lane. And hey, fans of universe mode and the modern games, Raw 2 might be worth a look.
It's sad how things turned out for those people who worked hard on the game, but things would only get worse with WrestleMania 21. Apparently, I wouldn't know. I had an early buggy copy of the game and I didn't get to play it properly, but I'll tell you all about that in the next Xbox video on the channel. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Thank you for watching and take care.